I've seen it over and over again over the last few months whenever we do these upcoming games of a certain month video that the comment section is flooded with people saying, oh my god, there's no good games coming out next month, oh my god, there's all this garbage coming out next month, whatever it may be, and I think garbage might be a little bit of a stretch. But nevertheless, people being a little bit disappointed by the lukewarm months of game releases. It picked up in April with the release of Returnal. May has been pretty solid thus far with Resident Evil and Mass Effect coming out uh, tomorrow. And then you also have Biomune at the end of this month. However, June, I'm sorry. If you can find at least one or two games to get excited for in the month of June, I just don't know what to say at that point. Like at that point, you might want to just take a look at different hobbies or something like that because June is one. One of the most stacked months of new game releases that I have seen in quite a while. There's really something for everybody. And in this video, I want to take a look at the top 10 upcoming games in the month of June. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Kicking things off, my personal most anticipated game next month is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. This is a huge, huge game release for the PlayStation 5. If you do have a PS5, if you don't, I'm sorry. But when you get one, this has to be at the top of your to playlist. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is really going to be a game that showcases what the PS5 can do with its SSD, with its visual capacity. I mean, if you've seen some of the gameplay of the title thus far, the gigantic mech. I mean, this is a game that's going to take the PlayStation 5 to the next level. I'm not saying it's going to take the PlayStation 5 to its limits because developers are still going to figure out how to optimize it and figure out how to make the visuals even better and do even more with the hardware. But thus far, this is going to be a showcase title for the PlayStation 5 and really one of those system selling games for the console. It is due out on June 11, so it's right around the corner. Definitely one to put at the top of the list. And Next up, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. This is a very exciting release because not only is it a Final Fantasy VII Remake upgrade, and by the way, that upgrade looks incredible. 60 frames per second is going to be amazing with the remake. It also includes an episode centering around Yuffie, and this is going to be an extension to the game. Now remember, Yuffie in the original Final Fantasy VII was just an optional character, so they didn't really flesh out her character all that much. I think with the remake, we have an opportunity to really do that, and hopefully they do that with another character that I'm sure you guys that are fans of Final Fantasy VII know about. But Yuffie as a starting point to make her a more compelling character in this remake, I think that's going to do a lot of good, and thus far, what we've seen out of the trailers have looked sensational. And then you also talk about the upgrades. The visuals are going to be upgraded. The frame rate's going to be upgraded. All that good stuff. It is going to be a premiere title. And while it's unfortunate that it's not going to be available on the PlayStation 4 being the Yuffie episode, again, if you do have a PlayStation 5, this is going to be another one of the major releases. Next up, we have Guilty Gear Strive, the latest game in the Guilty Gear franchise. Of course, Guilty Gear has been around for a very, very long time, but it's still become one of the more consistent fighting game franchise and that's pretty crazy to see given the competition of fighting games has never been higher but Guilty Gear Strive is going to be the next Guilty Gear title and this is going to be available on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 so that's nice the visuals look great on this one from a you know presentation standpoint and hopefully you guys that were interested did check out the beta because that was pretty good as well and uh, hopefully you know they get everything from a matchmaking standpoint down pat because that is one of the main things you want to get right in a competitive fight game like this. Many of you might know I'm not huge into competitive play on fighting games, but I still enjoy my fighting games here and there, and Guilty Gear is still one that I'm pretty nostalgic with, so very excited for this one. This is dropping June the 11th. Next up, if you're a fan of JRPGs, you'll definitely want to have Scarlet Nexus on your radar. This is the latest JRPG, big budget JRPG, coming from Bandai Namco. It is going to have a demo that will be released in the very near future, and it's being described as a brain punk action RPG. I might be crazy, I might be out of the loop, but I have never heard the term brain punk before, but I'll say this, Scarlet Nexus looks to have an awesome premise, and the visual style is definitely akin to stuff that Bandai Namco has put out in the past with things like Tales of. The game itself is set in the near future in an alternate reality where humanity develops technology and forms society based on the substances found in human brains. These substances also grant humans extrasensory superpowers. The other suppression force recruits members with supernatural abilities to protect humanity from the others, which are mindless monsters descending from the extinction belt. Going to be interesting to see how the entirety of the story plays out. I think this is a JRPG with a ton of potential and could be a brand new IP for Bandai Nam. 
Namco, a new JRPG franchise that could be a core pillar of Bandai Namco's portfolio. Scarlet Nexus is due out on June the 25th. Next up, we have a collection coming to the PlayStation 4, Ninja Gaiden the Master Collection. This will include Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge. Now, I know some people or a lot of people are disappointed that we are getting the Sigma variants of the games and not the original Ninja Gaiden releases with Ninja Gaiden 1 and Ninja Gaiden 2. Uh, but this is still going to be a quality re-release and something that I've been wanting for quite a while. Ninja Gaiden has kind of fallen to the wayside for a long time, and I still believe this is a franchise with a lot of life to it and I think it can make a comeback. We'll see if it does do that and how this sells. Because I'm sure Tecmo Koei and Team Ninja are going to be looking at the commercial numbers of Ninja Gaiden, the Master Collection, moving forward from there. Hey, maybe they even have a new Ninja Gaiden in development. That would be great to see as well. But just to revisit Ryu Hayabusa's story in Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, and Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge, that's going to be exciting nonetheless, and that is dropping June 10th. Next up, we have Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliances. As far as upcoming RPGs, this is one that's really going under the radar. And when I initially saw it, I was like, whoa, this is one that if it delivers, it might just take the gaming world a bit by storm out of nowhere. Just because I feel like anecdotally, the buzz isn't there. Maybe I'm wrong on that. The game notes, the world of Dungeons & Dragons comes to life in an explosive action brawler filled with real-time combat and dynamic co-op. Play as iconic D&D heroes and join up to three other friends to battle legendary monsters or powerful gear and unlock new abilities to take on even bigger challenges. Visually, the game looks great. It's going to have a co-op focus to it as well, so if you want to play with a friend, you have that option as well. And if you're a big D&D fan, you're going to be able to play as iconic D&D heroes. It's going to be right up your alley, and it's coming at a budget price point of $39.99. And hey, if you want to get it on Xbox, it was just announced that it's going to be an Xbox Game Pass title, so that's pretty cool if you wanted to play it on the cheap. Otherwise, it's coming at a pretty budget price point anyway, and it is due out June 22nd. Now, Next up, we have Chivalry 2. Yes, Chivalry is getting a follow-up, and Chivalry was super popular on PC, and now it's going to be coming to just about every major platform. PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Chivalry 2 notes the battlefield has just gotten bigger and knights of all platforms will be able to face off together on the same battlefield as Chivalry 2 will feature full crossplay capability between all consoles and PC. It notes stunning cinematic presentation, massive scale experience, the chaos of epic medieval battlefields, and battle through the mass scale combat meant to capture the intensity and scope of the Battle of the Bastards from Game of Thrones. Choose your fighting style and then unleash hell. And if you have a couple friends to play with, Chivalry 2 is obviously going to be much more enjoyable that way. And best of all, cross-platform play so you can play with your buddies that are on other platforms. This is due out June 8th. Next up, another game that I think is going to get a little bit of buzz as we get closer to its release. A little bit under the radar now, but Necromunda Hired Gun is coming to PS5, Series, PS4, X1, and PC. This looks like an over-the-top, fast-paced, high-octane first-person shooter, something that's going to be right up the alley of a lot of people. Necromunda Hired Gun is a new action-packed indie first-person shooter, and it's coming to consoles and PC. The bombastic, violent first-person shooter, Necromunda Hired Gun, is based on Games Workshop's dystopian cityscape Necromunda, set in the Warhammer 40k universe where gangs battle for survival in a nightmare under hive. Hunt your targets, upgrade your guns, and bionic augments, and cash in your bounties as you seek the truth across the endless hive city. Visually, the game looks great, and again, the standout is definitely from a gameplay standpoint. It looks fast-paced, it looks fluid, and it looks incredibly visceral, so this is going to be one that I think if it delivers, again, much like Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance, uh, it's going to have that buzz as long as it's a good game, and it might even develop that buzz after its release instead of really having the hype build towards its release. But again, this one is right around the corner. It is dropping June 1st. Next up, here's another game that's a little bit under the radar, but I'm personally looking forward to it. A Stonefly. Now, this is coming from Flight School Studio, and they brought to you guys Creature in the Well. Creature in the Well was a pretty interesting game that was a marriage of a couple different genres. Stonefly, visually, I think, has such a cool presentation style. It notes, harness the wind and soar through the wilderness of Stonefly, a chill and tranquil action-adventure game about self-discovery, legacy, and belonging. Glide your mech strategically among beautiful flora and dangerous fauna. Collect, uh, confronting hungry bugs, adventures, and memorable characters. 
interesting gameplay style in this one as well and I do imagine it's gonna come at a budget price point this one will also be dropping June 1st and lastly we have curved space which is coming June 29th for PS5 PS4 and uh, it will be on a PC Xbox one and Xbox series this is an old-school shoot-em-up reimagined curved space is an intense arcade style twin stick shooter that takes the classic formula and plunges it into the weirdest reaches of space battle cosmic space invading spiders across curved landscapes where bullets hug the terrain while the horizon drops sharply out of sight. Old school shoot 'em up reimagine, play your style and top the leaderboards, ride the synth wave and upgrade and take them down. You've got a, again, you've got a high energy synth wave soundtrack in partnership with a bunch of different artists. Uh, Three Force, Fury Weekend, and a Scandroid, so that's gonna offer some good music in this game as well, which I feel like is paramount in a bullet hell title, a shoot 'em up, I should say. You'll want that high quality music, and I feel like Curved Space is gonna have that. Originally was supposed to drop June 18th, unfortunately saw a delay, and it will be dropping June 29th. And that's gonna conclude this one. There are even more games than what I went over. Elder Scrolls Online is getting an expansion. Edge of Eternity is coming. You've got the Metro Exodus upgrade. Fallen Knight looks pretty good. There's a lot of cool stuff coming in the month of June, but that's gonna wrap up this one. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.